Watch. I will not do the splits. I do not care how many times you ask. I will not do the splits. Oh, oh, Melina. Oh, you want Melina to do the splits. I don't think it's happening, guys. I'm a very giving man. Let's make this night about Gargamel as well. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna honor you individually, and I'll start. Backstage at EWF, the 20th anniversary show with one of the first ever inductees to the Hall of Fame of EWF, Melina. Been a while since you've been on the ODQ show. It's good to see you, darling. Good to see you. How, how was life? I know you had a quick flight, so I just want to get to real quick. What are your thoughts? We heard you in the ring, but what are your thoughts? Oh, my goodness. My thoughts is that I'm so proud of, of course, I'm proud of EWF. Like, mainly, I'm proud of the school. And... The thing is, is that how incredible the school has uh, flourished since from the very beginning when we were, it was, we were like in a garage. I went to the facility right. the other day and it's like a huge, huge facility. Like there's training, like running tracks and everything. And then, I mean, it's almost like, it's like OVW type of style. It's incredible to see how it's grown. It's all Jesse. It yeah. Is. He's great. So it just goes to show, like, whatever, like, happened to me in my career, that's exactly what happened with EWF. Like, you know, that, that's when you know, like, this is, they're doing something right. Not, be, not just because of my career, but because of the way he's doing it. Like, all the people who's come out of his school, I feel like it's, like, a good-kept secret because... You don't hear a lot of people talking about no, Squirtle Hard Knocks, and I'm so surprised because yeah, he's amazing. All, uh, everybody's so focused out here on like PWG and companies like that, but when you come to shows like this, you see that Jesse's Jesse's thoughts are in each match, and you see he, he's he's totally immersed in every match. And he comes out there and watches these guys, and it makes me think back of the class like you and Frankie coming in and Bobby Bradley and everybody. It's it's like it's amazing how fast 20 years has gone, but it's amazing how much you guys have grown, how much the company's grown. Yeah, and it's so cool because when it comes to Jesse and like his school and everything. He gets in there like if he sees you doing something wrong or he wants to show you an example He gets up out of his chair. He goes out there and he'll show people he'll show people It's so cool to see him do that. He hasn't changed. He's the same since I've been there Now you're you're one of the first inductees. You're the first female inductee for sure how, how do you feel sitting back here getting this and then watching? The, some of the girls you competed with in WWE and some of the girls that have come up since you left competing for a much more respected women's division now, not just WWE, but in, in, in the wrestling world all over the planet. Okay, what I tell people all the time is like, I think the uh, women's division now, amazing. But I was working with some um, amazing women as well. The thing is, is that there was an opportunity. So it's not that I didn't have talented people working with me at that point in time. Definitely. We just didn't have opportunity. And I love the fact of being able to work with people who weren't, not only did I get to work with a Beth Phoenix and um, Trish and Mickey, like people like that, but I got to work with like, um, girls who are inexperienced, but it's not through their fault. Uh, you know, I, I love working with people because they were hardworking. They wanted it bad, and I got to teach them. They were learning, and I love working different experience levels and different styles. A true wrestler will be able to wrestle anybody at any time. No great example. You mentioned WrestleMania when you're out there in the ring. You had a WrestleMania match with Ashley on the grandest stage, and Ashley, as experienced as she was, you guys had an unbelievable match that night. I know. I'm so prior, like she is um. She may not be a, like super experienced, but that girl has fire. She has heart. Like the she is feisty, and I've I hardly come um, encounter women like that. Like, okay, when women are pissed, yeah, you get like that. But like <laughs> Ashley has it. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get all crazy with you. Not that all women well, guys do. are the same. Like you have no idea. Like whenever I talk to people, they're like, "Okay, the way I hear you talk, that's the way guys normally would talk, and girls would be the opposite." I'm like, "No, not in my world. <laughs> I'm more chill." <laughs> yeah, wrestling is the complete opposite. Most of the women that you see that are 
like Melina's character, cat scratch and the whole thing. They're, they're the chillest people on the planet, I swear. Oh, yeah, and people think that I'm like that, my character. Like, I get oh, no. pissed off yeah. over every little thing. Oh, no. That'd be, that's, I think maybe that's my alter ego, that if I could, you know, I'm, I'll be what people think I am, and that's more entertaining. Whatever people think I am, that's more entertaining. Oh, yeah. But me being chill, that's not good entertainment. No. <laughs> Melina will scratch your eyes out on a Saturday night, on a Thursday night at a live show, and then Friday she'll come and sit with us and have a drink at the improv show. That, that, that's Melina. And we want to thank you so much for coming on. Oh, We're so you. proud of you. Thank you so much for everything tonight. Oh, thank you so much. It's always a great time with the guys. Thank you. <laughs>
I've been saying this for the last 100 something days of his NXT Championship reign. Finn Balor has fizzled out completely. He has not been a hot commodity even since he won the championship. He was super over in Brooklyn and really over in Japan, which was where he got his big name, of course. But once he won the championship, it was kind of like, okay. What are you going to do for me now? What's the... The demon thing is fun to watch. And it's cool to see him transform and do all these different demon entrances. But at the, at the base of it, there has to be a solid, consistent, continual entertainment factor. And Finn Balor has not been entertaining since he won the championship. He's been really coasting and letting... Kevin Owens for a while carry the show when he was still there and letting Sami Zayn and Nakamura and all these guys and Samoa Joe and everybody really carry the show while he was his champion kind of in the main event but not really in the, the best match of the night which is what the champion always should be. AJ also asked me, how are you enjoying Jericho's new high school whiny gimmick of calling everybody stupid idiots and having tantrums? Circa YGJ 20, 2003. Yeah. You know, people are going to crap on Chris Jericho for the way he acts. and the, But you know what? Jericho's been around for almost... All, his career is pushing 20, over 25 years now. So, I... I understand why people crap on Jericho. He is so entertaining still to this day. He is so fun to watch. And he's fun to listen to. He's great on the mic. He always has been great on the mic. He finally was given a chance at WCW toward the end when he made his own break. And then WWE just let him soar after a while of, I guess, proving himself as the best way I can put it. Even as champion, he was having to prove himself. Um, he's great. Jericho's awesome. I love the gimmick now. I've always loved his gimmick transformations. He 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 called the Undertaker the Madonna of wrestling at one point. He's become the Madonna of wrestling. He can transform and do anything and everything in this business. He's great. This one is from Iper at Mateo TC. Do you think that Cody can revitalize his career with Flair as the manager? What about Neville as U.S. champion or in tag with Apollo Cruz? That's really three questions there, Iper, but okay. Um, Cody Rhodes needs to be Cody Rhodes. Stardust, I think, is played out. With Flair as manager, is a bit stretchy because a, Ro a Flair manager and a Rhodes? Don't know about that. Uh, Neville is U.S. champion, maybe, but have we had enough guys that aren't from the United States of America hold the U.S. championship now? Seriously. Cesaro? Uh, Kevin Owens probably be U.S. champion probably soon. You've got Rusev who was champion for part of 2014, 2015. Let an American guy win the name U.S. title. Or a tag team with Cruz. Why are Neville and Power Cruz going to be together? What is the point of that tag team? I see no point to that whatsoever. Alright, let's see here. True legend, when does Mark Henry's contract expire? And do you think WWE should save the money for younger talent? Love Mark Henry, but he can't do much. Excuse me. Uh, I think the talent, the money should be used for younger talent. Mark Henry is at the end of his career. There's nothing really for him to do. He's he's won world championships. He's won secondary championships. He's been in main event spots for a long time now. No, nothing for him to prove. Nothing for him to prove to the fans or to his company or to the co-workers of his company. Uh, he is a... It's despite people say about Mark Henry, he's a surefire Hall of Famer one day. He's done enough in his career where he deserves it. And I don't think that he really needs to prove anything else. I think that the money can be used toward some NXT talent, or even some talent they haven't even signed yet. Let, let those guys get that money, and let those guys earn that green and start making their name for themselves in WWE on the main roster or NXT. That'd be awesome. Thank you all for watching. We will see you guys next week with more Talk Wrestling.